Hello, this is Randy. Today, I wanted to bring you along on a ride in an IFR departure from a local airport. IFR simply stands for Instrument Flight Rules. So just prior to takeoff, the local control tower had already given me several pieces of information in my IFR clearance. This information includes the altitude to climb to in my initial climb, what heading to fly, and then the radio frequency for the next air traffic controller that handles the departures from this airport. All right, there, Victor, contact in time, Roger, good day. Contact in departure, 783 Victor, good day. Okay, a couple of things are going on here. First off, you see me turning. After I've gotten off the runway for a few hundred feet, I start turning to my initial heading that was assigned to me earlier. And next, I'm being told to contact departure control. So now I switch my radios and make an attempt to contact departure control to let them know that I'm checking in with them. San Antonio departure, 783 Victor is climbing through 1.3 for 3,000 direct turn. So here's the pieces of information that I'm giving to the next controller. The first piece of information is my current altitude. The next piece of information is the altitude I was assigned by the tower to climb to. And the last piece of information is my heading or course. In this case, it was a direct to fix called churn. Seventy three Victor, I just since my altitude is still fairly low, I'm having a little bit of trouble getting radio reception with air traffic control out of uh, San Antonio. Antonio. Approach 73 Victor's having trouble hearing you. Can you say again, please? 900,000. It'll get better shortly. All right. Uh, did you say climb and maintain 900,000? Is that what you heard? Nope, I didn't hear that. I heard 900,000. FA-1 fighting 240. I don't know if that was for a, I said who it was. Two to one, fighting two, four, zero. Two, seven, zero. Rough eight, two, turn off heading three, three, zero. At this point, you can see we're beginning to lose sight of the ground and visual reference. So, as we enter the clouds, this is a point in which you begin to fly by your instruments only. <laughs> I tell you, approach 73 Victor. I'm sorry, did you clear me to 900,000 or stay at 3? Never right through Victor, climb maintain 900,000. Up to 900,000, 73 Victor. So here's what we've done so far. Upon departing the airport, the control tower had me fly direct churn. Once I get to churn, I'm to join a Victor Airway. A Victor Airway is like a highway in the sky, and I'm supposed to follow Victor 198 to my next fix. So at this point, I climbed to 9,000 feet and simply follow the highway in the sky, and then continuing following my flight plan as assigned earlier by air traffic control. So one thing to point out here is that I'm actually not flying the airplane. The autopilot is. When you see me reach up to that control panel in the top of my avionics stack, that's actually the autopilot control head. So those are just adjustments that you see me make, either to altitude or to heading. Though it looks like I'm flying the plane because my left hand is on the control stick, I'm actually just monitoring, and I keep my hand there just in case the autopilot disengages. I'm really not controlling the airplane at this point. Next comes my favorite part of IFR flight, breaking out of the clouds on top. So you're about to see a break in the clouds, and you can begin to see the sky. Here's what I love about it. When you break out of the clouds on top, the sky is just bluer. There is no haze in the air because the haze is being trapped by the clouds. Another beautiful thing about being on top is the air is simply smoother. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed flying along with me on an IFR departure today. We'll be back soon with some more videos, hopefully the video for sun and fun in Florida.